Hi, I run a company called Blue Sky, and we're building decentralized social protocol that uses IPLD. You might have heard about us in association with Twitter, so I'm just going to give some brief background to tell you guys who we are and what's been happening for the past few years. So, in 2019, Jack Dorsey, the then CEO of Twitter, announced that Twitter was going to be funding a decentralized social protocol. And then they brought together some outside collaborators in a matrix chat room. And this included myself. And during this time, we produced an ecosystem review. And then in 2021, they selected me to lead my vision of the project for Blue Sky. And so I founded an independent company. And then we received funding. And in case you're wondering, we are fully independent from Twitter. So no, Elon is not my new boss. <laughs> I'm relieved about that. <laughs> so this year, I hired a team, and then we chose some, uh, the architecture for how we're going to do this, and we released an early prototype called ADX, the Authenticated Data Experiment. We have since renamed this to the AT protocol, or the Authenticated Transfer Protocol, or ATP. And we announced last week that we are building an app. So for a quick overview of the AT protocol, um, it uses uh, IPLD in the data repos. And so that is essentially a Merkle tree where each node is, uh, use, uses IPLD. And then uh, the identity are DIDs, decentralized identifiers, that link a human readable name and a cryptographic key. And then this is used to sign the Merkle root. And the network is federated, so users have servers that do the heavy lifting. But then this allows their data to be kept in a canonical form that they can move around. So and a way to think about this is pretty much like if you're social, it worked like Git and GitHub. So you have this local backup that is like your Git repo, and then you can use GitHub if you like, or you can move your data around to an alternative like GitLab or Bitbucket. So I won't get into this now in the interest of time, but the, if you're curious, the IPLD codec we're using is DAG Seabor, and the particular data structure is a Merkle search tree. The Blue Sky app is coming soon, and we announced last week that we are doing a private beta. And then the wait list quickly filled up and is now over 50,000. So we're going to break those up into smaller groups. <laughs> and so I don't have any specific asks on the IPFS side because IPLD is working well for us. But if you would like to get feedback on our protocol docs, you can do that at, at proto.com. You can join our matrix channel to chat with our devs, and that's the link is on blueskyweb.xyz. And if you want to try our app, the wait list is very long. So for this audience, if you'd like to message me directly on Twitter, I can try to get you in earlier than number 50,000. So thank you very much. I'll hand it over to the next speaker. So we're building the world's fastest growing weather station network. We launched earlier this year, and we already have 9,000 members in our Discord server. We have more than 5,000 station sales uh, in 66 countries. And um, this is the weather forecast for this week uh, from five different meteorological models. You can think of it as five different mobile apps. And the blue line is one of our weather stations here in Lisbon, what it has recorded. So as you can see, the first day, more or less, the forecast uh, aligns the, the, what happened in reality. But the second day, uh, most of the forecasts were wrong. So that's, that's a small problem for individuals, but it's a huge one for the agriculture industry, the energy supply chain industry. In fact, one third of the worldwide economy is weather sensitive. That's why governments spend billions monitoring and forecasting the weather, but uh, it's not a solved problem. Uh, it's not easy to be solved. So inspired by Filecoin and Helium, we're trying a different approach. We're building an economic system around weather data in which weather station owners are rewarded with our token for the data contribution and uh, weather sensitive enterprises, customers, they purchase and spend our token in exchange for weather data and weather services. To support this economy, we had to create our own hardware. Uh, we have three different types of weather stations like this one. Uh, which are more efficient uh, and uh, they're energy 
autonomous and communication autonomous. They're 10 times more affordable and they provide cryptographic proofs. So our community benefits already from our mobile app, Android and iOS. And uh, we have shipped 2,000 units. We're shipping 1,000 more on Monday, this, next week. And we're scheduled uh, to produce more than 10,000 units, 11,000 by the end of the year. Um, for, for comparison, NOAA, the US Met Office, is operating 14,000 stations. So we're, we're getting there. Um, so the next steps in terms of development for our project is we are progressing the integration with IPFS, Filecoin Plus, computer data. We want to make sure that the data we collect from the stations have the maximum uh, quality. We are building a number of mechanisms to track the forecast accuracy. And later on, long-term goal is to act as a weather oracle on-chain on to enable new types of Web3 applications that need weather data. OK, that's a bit broken. But the so two years ago, we started experimenting with IPFS. And the vision back then and still today is that we want to build a weather uh, superstructure, a weather network that is a superstructure that is unstoppable. Uh, so we think that weather stations should be able to connect directly to IPFS nodes. Uh, so if we pull the plug from our servers, then the network won't have a problem. That's why we started working on an IPFS client for microcontrollers that are powering those stations. Obviously, those stations don't have Linux. They're way lower. So we did world's first uh, IPFS client for, um, for ASP32. So it's like an Arduino compatible. But then we ran into a problem, which is how to, authentic how to authenticate thousands of devices directly on IPFS. And we did a very you know, lame implementation of using basic HTTP uh, authentication. Um, so we had to hard code credentials in the devices themselves. Uh, since then, we've done a number of different things, but in, in my point of view, it would be cool if we could directly use the X509 certificate that we have in the hardware to authenticate directly to an IPFS node. And I think the closest that exists in towards this direction is Web3 Auth. Um, but it, it, I think what's missing is an Amazon a Cognito for Web3. So if anybody are working towards this direction, I'll be happy to talk about it. We're four people here from the team. Please find us and let's talk more. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Francis Tyus. I'm a system professor of computational linguistics at Indiana University. Uh, and I work with uh, language technology for indigenous and marginalized language communities. Um, today, I will be talking about Omnilingo, uh, which is a project uh, I have on uh, language learning. So, uh, as many of you will know, uh, learning languages is quite hard. Um, and one of the uh, more difficult parts is uh, listening and pronunciation. So, uh, there are very few apps for uh, language learning um, and very few free apps. Uh, so uh, the idea is basically to make an app that's uh, possible to use for uh, practicing both listening and pronunciation. Uh, so uh, the uh, basic idea is that we should use IPFS to store all of the data. So for example, clips, transcripts, metadata, um, all of this, uh, and machine learning models, and then uh, have a way that people can uh, put this together to make uh, their own apps. So uh, it could be targeted at, for example, uh, language revitalization uh, or uh, language instructors or basically anyone who uh, has ever uh, sent an email to Duolingo and have them uh, say, uh, I'm sorry, we don't have time for that. So uh, originally we had a homebrew uh, system, a content addressing system using HTTP. Um, but then we found out about IPFS, and so uh, now we're using IPFS for all of this. Uh, we have uh, all of the data is from Common Voice. We have uh, audio files in MP3 and JSON files for uh, the transcripts uh, and all of the metadata. Uh, 
Um, and we have a demo app uh, using IPFS JS. Uh, so uh, the general idea, it's a gap filling exercise, uh, which you will probably be uh, familiar with. Uh, you listen to a clip and uh, there's a word missing and you have to fill in the word. Uh, the clips start easy and they get progressively harder. Um, and the entire app is more or less language independent. So we use uh, language data from Mozilla's Common Voice project, which has uh, data for over 100 languages now. Um, and it's very easy to uh, add new languages to this, uh, to this app. So uh, uh, you can see an example here. Uh, we're not designers, uh, as you will probably notice. And you can also try it out online. Um, so uh, don't everyone go there at once, because um, uh, you might take down the server. So uh, we have this uh, demonstration app for the uh, gap filling exercise, uh, and we're working on pronunciation feedback. Um, this will involve storing more stuff on IPFS, for example, uh, speech recognition models. Um, we would like to make a nicer interface. Neither of us uh, who are working on this are uh, graphic designers or UX people. Um, and we would like to have different uh, tasks in the app. So for example, choose one or build words out of blocks and stuff like this. And we would also like it to be a lot more reliable. So uh, this brings us to uh, what I was asked to talk about. Uh, when I was asked to give the, the uh, short uh, talk, people said, hey, what's the problem with IPFS? Uh, can you tell us? Um, so uh, I do a lot of uh, work and research in the uh, mountains in Mexico. Uh, so I work with uh, a Nahuatl speaking community there. Um, and the internet access isn't great. Uh, and the best, best possible internet access you can have is Starlink. Uh, so that's like Elon Musk net. Um, unfortunately, IPFS doesn't work over Starlink. Um, so we can use it over the like uh, 3G or 4G, but it's insanely slow. Um, so uh, that's one thing. The other thing is uh, most of the time when we're using IPFS JS, which is fantastic, uh, excellent work, um, but because everything has to go through the preload nodes, about half of the time the connections don't make it, especially if uh, we're on like low bandwidth or low reliability uh, internet connections. Um, yeah, so uh, that's on the connectivity side. On the developer side, uh, we would like to see an implementation for C or for Python, uh, but if we have one in C, we can make one for Python. Um, the Python HTTP implementation is out of date and unmaintained, um, and there's really poor integration with Linux distros. And those are my thank yous, agresimientos, um, and I think that's me. <laughs>